Hi guys, I hope you're okay. Here we are again, locked up. I mean, locked down at home, um, staying at home again. I thought I would send you a video just to show you how to make my flapjack. I know some of you were wondering how I make it, and some of you didn't believe that I do make it. They thought I bought it from a shop, but I do actually do make it. I'll show you how I make it, and perhaps you can make it at home with an adult's help. Firstly, you need the ingredients, and here it is, my uh, recipe. Mr. Allen's flapjack, 125 grams of butter, 125 grams of sugar, 225 grams of oats, one teaspoon of ginger. That is optional, you don't need to put that in if you don't want to. Five tablespoons of golden syrup, and you need an oven, obviously, to cook it. It's at 190 degrees Celsius or gas mark five. And here are the ingredients that I've got here. I've got some uh, stalk. You can use any butter, really. Um, but I use stalk. I've got brown sugar, but it doesn't really matter what sugar you use. Any sugar does work. Golden syrup. This comes in bottles and tins. I've got this one in the bottle. I've got some Scott's porridge oats. Um, but any oats will do. They all taste the same. And here is some ginger. Now, again, you don't have to put this in, but I quite like the fiery taste it gives. But don't put too much in, otherwise it tastes a bit um, like ginger cake, which you don't really want. For the equipment, you'll need a set of scales to help you measure out the ingredients correctly. Uh, that's just a tub to go on top of the scale so I can put the uh, ingredients in it. You'll need some greaseproof paper. That's going to line this oven proof dish that I've got here. You can use a, a tray, that is fine. Uh, whatever you've got at home that goes in the oven would work. So I'm going to use that to line the dish. And you need a pan that's large enough to melt the butter in, uh, sugar and syrup and then to mix your oats and ginger in with that before you put it into the oven proof dish ready for the oven. Now that I've got all the equipment and ingredients ready, all I need to do is make sure that I'm ready to um, start cooking. So I've got my apron, I'm going to put my apron on. You never know, I might get a little bit messy doing this. Dealing with food, you never know what can happen I'm going to tie it around the front because I'm not that good at tying it around the back. So here it is. The next thing I'm going to do is turn on the oven so it preheats so it gets to temperature before I put the flapjack in to cook. Gas mark 5 or 190 degrees. There it is. Better check it's on. And then when we're dealing with food, the first one of the really first things we need to do is wash our hands before we even touch anything else. So that is what I'm going to do. Just run them under the sink, put on a little bit of soap, give them a good wash, 20 seconds, or singing happy birthday, but I'll spare you that at the moment. You never know, I might have a bit of a song later on. Once they're all rubbed in and you've got everything and you've got all the fingers nice and clean, give it a good run underneath the tap. There we go, to rinse off, you can dry your hands and then you're ready to begin weighing out the ingredients. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is weigh out the butter. So, I've got a spoon, 125 grams of butter. I'm going to just blob into here. That's not quite there yet. Nearly there. Just a little bit more maybe. Oh, that's far too much. 125 grams. 124 and just a titty bit more, should take it to 125. There we go. That then is going to be added to my pan. That's it. 
And I just need to cancel that bound to zero again when it works. That's better. Then the next thing I need to do is 125 grams of sugar. Seems like a lot of sugar, but uh, it is a, a, quite a sweet cake. Again, I'll put a bit too much in, so we'll put a bit more back in there. There we are, 126 grams, that's near enough for me. That goes in there. Okay, and the next thing I need to do is get a spoon, a tablespoon, and I need to add five tablespoons of golden syrup to the pan. Here we go. This takes a little bit of time. Count with me. One, two, three, four. And you are allowed to laugh at the noise the bottle makes. Because I'm laughing at it too. Five. <laughs> there we go. Right, there's my five tablespoons of golden syrup. Okay, that's going to go into the sink because that's very sticky. I don't like particularly like having that all over. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do, um, just so I'm prepared, is to measure out my oats and according to the recipe it is a 225 grams of oats so here we go it's already on two I'm not going to mess with it again so I just need to do it to 223 if I'm using my maths right 221 three Whoop, oh, oh there we go 224 okay that will won't make too much of a difference, that'll be fine. Okay, so we are now set and prepared. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to melt the butter, sugar and syrup together um, on a low heat. This is where you might need to get a parent to help you. Just added to the oats, I'm just going to put in one little teaspoon of ginger. Now, I just use the end of the spoon and I just gauge it like that. It's not quite a teaspoon, but I don't want to add too much ginger flavour to it. It just gives it a little bit of an extra, well, it just makes it a bit extra special, really. So that's why I put it in. Again, you don't have to put it in if you're not particularly um, partial to ginger, if you don't like ginger very much. Um, you can just leave it out and the flapjack will taste heavenly anyway. Okay, so now we're going to melt the butter, sugar and syrup together. Again, I'm just going to turn it onto a, a low heat. Once it's lit, I'm going to turn it right almost down to the bottom. So it's only on a, a little flame. Um, it's important at this bit, you hold on to the handle. Um, you get your parents to watch you do it if you're doing it with your parents because this mixture can get quite warm. I don't want it to boil, um, I just want to melt it together so gently and we're just going to keep stirring it until the butter melts and the sugar and the syrup all get mixed together. It will take just a couple of minutes and then you'll have like a, a brown liquid um, in the bottom. You don't really want it to bubble too much, you just want it to um, be nice and melted and mixed together. Once it's at that stage, that's when you can add your oats to the mixture. Okay, this will take just a couple of minutes, so we'll fast forward a little bit. 
As you can see, it's almost melted now. We're almost ready for adding the oats. I just want to give it a couple uh, more seconds just to make sure all that butter is melted and the sugar has also started to dissolve into the liquid. Um, it does smell quite nice at the moment. There we are, yes, it's almost ready for the oats. When it looks like that, that is when it's ready for you to add the oats. So at this point, I turn off the stove and it's, I'm going to start to add in the oats. Just add them in like that. Okay, and now at this point, we just need to stir it round gently, making sure all those lovely oats are covered in that delicious liquid that we've just made ourselves. Okay, so just keep stirring them round, and you really want to see, you can see that they become a little bit shiny and not white anymore, and that's what you want. You want to make sure that the, all those oats are covered in that liquid. Otherwise, when you put it in the oven to um, bake, um, it, the flatjack will be brittle and it won't stick together. So once you've got all those oats stuck together, um, uh, covered in that liquid, then you are ready to put it into your oven proof dish on your grease proof paper. So come with me. Right, it's time to put the grease proof paper in the dish. It won't stick perfectly at the moment. I'm just going to get a spoon. Right, so I'm just going to pour this onto the dish. All those lovely oats and sticky liquid into you get everything, you want all that goodness there, you don't want to leave anything out, do you? Now let's get rid of the pan, into the sink, and then I'm going to scrape the spoon with a colder spoon. This a colder spoon is best for this bit because what you're going to then do is spread out your mixture and press it down into the corners. Now if your paper doesn't quite fit, you can always move it up just a little bit. There we go. You spread it and press it down, flatten it almost. This is where you can really have a bit of fun. Squash it through to those corners, but try not to make too many um, bits where it's uh, got holes in. You want to make it nice and even and level. Okay, so that's almost right now, to be honest. Just going to press it down a little bit more. You want it compact because you do want it to stick together and you want it to be quite solid when you're eating it but you don't want it to be too solid you want to have a nice crunch on top and to be nice and soft um, underneath in the middle and you you get you get kind of layers of lovely crisp on the top and a lovely syrupy buttery oats on the bottom which is just fantastic right okay that is about ready to go in the oven now Not to use the oven gloves for this bit. Here we go. Just going to open the oven door. I'm going to put it in the oven, close the door, and now I'm going to use a timer. I time it for around about 20 minutes, but I would check it after 15. You want to have it a nice uh, brown uh, golden top. Um, and you don't want it to catch, you don't want it to burn at the edges, so just check it after 15 minutes, but 20 minutes is about right in my oven anyway. I'm hoping it will be the same for you. So I will see you in 20 minutes. Here we are, can you hear that noise? That means that um, the timer's up and the flapjack should be ready. So 
I'm just going to be really careful and open the door because it's hot, hot, hot. I don't want to burn my eyebrows off or anything silly like that. So I'm going to stand well back and open the oven door. You might need an adult to help you with this. I've got my oven gloves on. I'm just going to pull the shelf out. I'm going to stop that timer actually because it makes a horrible noise. And then I'm going to pull out the flapjack. Now, as you can see here, um, it is nice and golden brown. It is very extremely hot, so I'm just going to go and put it down and wait for it to cool slightly. Close the oven door, turn off the oven, put my uh, oven gloves back there, and I shall see you in about ooh, 20 minutes when it's cooled down enough for us to cut up. Okay, see you then. Okay, so I've now taken it out of the tray and as you can see, it's cooled down a little bit and now I'm going to cut it into the squares so it's easy to eat. You don't want to take all that to school, obviously. Well, when we're in school, that is. And um, for this bit, I you can use a knife, but I like to use a pizza cutter. So if you've got one of these at home, it's quite good to use. All I do is I'm going to cut it. It is still quite warm, but it makes it easier to cut. Put it down the middle, and then I'm just going to cut it into squares. Now, depending on what kind of uh, feeling you have or hunger, then you can cut it into six or eight squares. I put it into six, because you know my pieces in the playground are quite large. Um, alternatively, um, you can also, at this stage, put some chocolate on if you wanted, but I'm not kind of keen on chocolate at the moment, so I just like it as it is. Or sometimes I add a bit of um, fruit to the recipe, like uh, some currants or raisins, which you can do as well if you wanted to do that. But as you can see, that looks pretty good. It needs a good uh, couple of hours now to set properly and harden up and then you can store it in a Tupperware box or some sort of tin box that you've got um, and that will be fantastic. I hope you've enjoyed watching this uh, video. It's my first video, so be kind. Uh, I will try and do a couple more videos. I'm hoping to tell some stories and show you a little bit about uh, the local area when I'm on my daily exercise because we're only allowed out once a day aren't we at the moment um, and some of the wildlife maybe and show you a few of the things I enjoy that you might like to try as well so I hope you've enjoyed the video uh, I've made a YouTube channel so you can keep up to date with these things uh, called Mr Allen's World As Is and I hope you would like to subscribe to it and I will see you real soon. Be careful, be good, stay safe, do your schoolwork for Miss Shaw and be wonderful.